Please give a huge welcome to Michael Boyd. Okay, uh, thanks very much. It's great to be here. Um, I'm going to talk about my journey to start off with, just very briefly. Uh, then I'm going to show two short videos, so I don't have lots of fancy slides, but the, uh, the short videos, one is about our work in prisons, and the other one is about homeless football. And then I'll finish just with a brief uh, conclusion. Okay, so my journey um, is uh, an interesting one. So if you go right back to when I was a kid, um, I, all I loved was football. Um, wasn't great in school, but twisted everything towards football. So football is my passion, and I suppose without really realising it, my whole life I've always followed. You know, football always followed the passion. So as a player, I wasn't a great player, still, still not a great player, <laughs> but still playing. Like even last night, um, I was training with a, a football team, and I'm probably 10 years older than most of the coaches, but it's my enthusiasm, my, my love, so it's my passion that I follow. Um, as a kid, field my 11 plus, that was my first big failure. And big, everybody expected me to pass it, all my older brothers passed it. I failed it. Uh, went to a school called Lisbon Shara, which was the school that George Best went to. And Lisbon Shara was like a football school, so I was super tall for me, age, pretty good at football at that age. So when I went there, they just played football all the time. So I was in the first year, I was playing for the second year in football. They were taking me out of you know, things that aren't that important, like miles in English. And <laughs> and I, was all, I was all playing football for the second year. Uh, the school, the headmaster of the school was actually a FIFA instructor, like the highest qualified coach, uh, one of the highest qualified coaches in the whole of the UK. Uh, and he, he basically encouraged us to follow our passions. And I can remember I was sometimes getting in trouble in school and I'd be sent to the headmaster's office. And instead of telling me off, he would talk to me about football and he would try and find out what enthused me. And years, years and years later, I got a really good job in football. And he wrote to me and he said, do you remember those conversations we had when you were sent to my office and I was going to be telling you off and actually we were talking about what your passion was and that was, that was a big thing for me. So yeah, following your passions is, is important, I think. Um, it can be your job if you, really, if you really want it to be or equally important is volunteering and making time for your passion and trying to serve others. So my, my journey was still my 11 plus, went to Lisbon Shara, did really well at Lisbon Shara and they transferred me across to Grosvenor, which was the school that my blood didn't want to go to. Uh, so I, I went to Grosvenor in the second year and suddenly it was Latin and Maths and Rugby and there was no football. And so what I, what I did was I started to lobby the teachers uh, for football and I basically bent their ears so long that by the time we reached third year they introduced their first ever football team in third year and we won everything. Or we won all the schools, cup competitions, all that sort of stuff. So I learned very quickly that you could you know, convince and, and uh, get people to get on the side if you talk to them. Um, then I went on and I went to university and uh, was doing a degree and I won a scholarship to go to America and in America this scholarship is called the Business Education Initiative and I was doing a sports studies degree. I could pick any university basically I wanted in America, they gave me a list of like 70 different universities. Me being an ignorant uh, kid from East Belfast, is I, I went through all the universities and looked where was the hottest place because for me it was a holiday. So I, I picked uh, Alabama. I could have went to California or New York, but I picked uh, Montgomery, Alabama, which is an interesting place. It's where the civil rights movement started and all that sort of stuff. So while I was there, I started to learn more about civil rights, uh, and I played for the university soccer team, as they called them. And it was a really interesting experience for me, but I got very homesick. I was a 19-year-old boy, very much a home bird. As soon as the football season finished, which was around about Christmas time, I came home early, and I didn't go back, because I was missing my granny, I was missing my cat, I was missing my girlfriend. Uh, so the football wasn't happening, so I just thought, right, I'm not going back. So I went to the University of Ulster, and they were going to kick me out of my course for not going back because I was on this scholarship. Um, what, what they said to me was, if you don't find somewhere for the next few months for your placement, you're going to get kicked off the course. So that was a bit of a hard thing to take. I went back, uh, and I spoke to my brothers, and they said, what do you love? And I said, football. So I went to the Irish Football Association, knocked on the door, and said, could I work for free for a few months on placement? And that was, my, that was my introduction to football. There was only, at the time, there was only about 12 staff working at the Irish FA. I knocked on the door, offered to work for free uh, for four months, ended up working for free for eight months for them. Uh, <laughs> uh, that was my introduction to football. On the back of that, I went on to do a master's uh, in communications. 
and then a job came up at the IFA as community relations officer. Went in, got the job. I was only going actually for the experience of going for the interview, and they offered me the job, which was a major shock to the system. So the first few months working at the IFA, I was finishing my masters and, and working for the Irish Football Association as well. That was my starting point in football, and way back then, there was 12 staff. Football had a terrible uh, image. It was pretty much synonymous with sectarianism back then. This is around about 2000. Uh, the international team didn't have a kit sponsor. Crowds were as low as 4,000 at the international games for the Northern Ireland matches. So there was 10,000 empty seats. And my job as a young 21-year-old or 22-year-old was to go in and change the atmosphere at the international games. That was what the purpose of the job was. And when I got the job, I was absolutely buzzing. I said I got a job in football. I was, I was really happy. But everybody I bumped into said, you've got the worst job in football, you've the worst job in the world. And I was like, I'm naturally sort of enthusiastic and, and positive. So anyway, I attacked the job as hard as I could uh, and started to realise very quickly, the only way you can change an atmosphere of a, 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 within a stadium or within a crowd is if you get the supporters involved. So the supporters had never been involved before. So I, I got in there and started working with the fan groups. And I was very lucky, through amateur football, I actually knew a lot of the key people in the Northern Ireland fan base, and slowly but surely we started to change the atmosphere. And how we did that was I listened, 99% of what I was doing was listening, and then implemented ideas that the fans came up with. So over a period of time, we went from having no sponsor, having hardly anybody at the games in 2000, and then in 2006, we won an international uh, award for being the best supporters in Europe. And that was because of the work of the fans. All I did was facilitate that. So if you fast forward to today, where I am now is I'm a director. So I've been a student placement, I've been a development officer, I've been a manager, I've been a head of department, and now I'm one of uh, three directors that oversee the whole of the Irish FA group. And that's a 20 year journey. When I started, there was 12 staff, now there's 150 staff, there's three different companies. One of the companies is the foundation, which is the charity of one. And I want to tell you a bit about the foundation today. The foundation works with about 70,000 people on a regular basis. It uses football as a hook um, to tackle issues around racism, sectarianism. It also supports employability. We have a football for all program for uh, all uh, ability groups, uh, and we have a pathway to international football for all ability groups. The video I want to show now is about our Stay On Side program, and it's about our working prison. So I just want to show a short video. Hopefully it comes on. That's probably one of the biggest benefits we have playing the game of football, that it brings people from all backgrounds together. And it's just trying to help uh, through the IFA with, with, with getting people out and, and when they finish their, their, their sentences they can go into jobs and, and try and move on with their lives. So um, it's just trying to get that across and here to, to show face and to show our support. It's about getting people here uh, and using football uh, to divert and, and deter their uh, their attention uh, away uh, from what they maybe done previously and, and, and on to more positive things. Just to sort of come here and see, obviously, everyone taking part, smiling their face, getting the sweat on, enjoying themselves, and even Chris Lindsay coming in here is coaching them as well. Good to see, but uh, obviously the AFA are doing a good job. Uh, I mean, we know that good physical uh, health contributes towards good mental health. Uh, um, and really, there's no better way to engage with, with the, the young men here, many young men here uh, in McGabry, than, than through football and, and through sport. Okay. Uh, some quick stats to do with that programme. So, we work with 99 prisoners, uh, around about 99 prisoners every year. Something like 75% of the ones who get out don't re offend. And out of that 99 every year, there's about 10 of them that we bring into our program. So they go through a, a program with us where we actually employ some ex-police uh, officers who work in the, the prison on behalf of our charity. Uh, and they deliver a program and it upskills the, the prisoners uh, so that when they come out, they can get involved in coaching in the community or they can give back to their local clubs uh, and be involved in, in our programs. At the minute, we have 10 ambassadors who have come through the program who are actively working on our programs. That is a program that's making a massive difference. And if you, if you know that sector, um, those, some of those stats are really impressive. So the likes of NIACRO and uh, the Justice Agency want to do more and more of this type of work with us. So we've just started 
uh, a female program at Hyde Bank College as well. Uh, and Hyde Bank uh, colleagues were uh, female prisoners. So, so it's, it's, it's a, a program that's evolving. Um, we're also doing a lot of employability academies, which are, are new uh, for football in Northern Ireland, where we're targeting basically young people who have fallen outside of education or are on the fringe of getting in trouble. We, we work with them and we put them through programs and we give them opportunities to work as casual coaches on our program. So that's the Stay On Side program. I wanted to finish off, I'm conscious I'm sort of running over my time, but I want to finish off by talking about volunteering. You know, I think for where you are in sick form, one of the, the key things I think you can do with regards to your passion is volunteer in your, whatever your passion is, as long as it's not serial killing. Follow it as best you can and, and volunteer and get work experience and, and make yourself known. You know, don't be scared to stand out and, and knock on doors and say, look, I'm keen to do this, I want to make a difference. Um, volunteering for me is still an important aspect of what I'm about. I volunteer on a charity called Street Soccer and I, and Street Soccer works with homeless people. And I, I was one of the founders of Street Soccer way back in 2013. And Street Soccer, um, it's a really, it's a project that works with people who've been homeless, uh, people with drink and drug problems and refugee and, and asylum seekers. It's working with probably some of the hardest to reach people in Northern Ireland. And it's a very, it's a project which can transform lives, but it's also a very difficult project because often you'll be working with people who, who um, are very fragile and have a lot of issues. Uh, and you have to try and support them, and you can't see it for everybody, so unfortunately, um, you know, sometimes there's, there's sad stories connected to this program. But I want to show you a short, sort of powerful video about Street Soccer and I, a program that I'm happy to volunteer in. I grew up in foster care from when I was born, right up until I was 19, and I moved out. I uh, went got my own place in the hostel. Me and my chaplain was through, my mum came out on Tuesday in the, in the house that we lived in, and I wouldn't say anything against Kai, I seen the likes of people trying to hang themselves every morning, walking about with open cuts and you know, the heroin and tablets. And, you know. They were abusing alcohol and drugs. And... I was harmless, I had no family. I was self harming on a daily basis, you know. Taking tablets every day that we just went to commit suicide. There was ambulance, ambulance men out every day to check on me, you know, just to make sure that I was still alive. I met my child's father and things didn't work out for us, so my mental health just got really bad. Anxiety and depression affected a wee bit of my parent and social Came and took my son into foster care before. My son was adopted about a year ago. I was introduced to street soccer, and since then, my life has just been on a lot. About two years ago, one day I went to the football and she was stuck in it from her end. I really have enjoyed it. It's helped me out with a lot of difficult times in my life. Street soccer is a charity set up for disadvantaged groups, such as the homeless people with addictions, mental health issues, we use football as a hoop to get them engaged in the project and then we try and identify their needs and try and give them support. Give me a chance to like, give them the week team, you know, doing football a few times a week, it's good for my mental health itself. Before street soccer, my confidence was so low and so was myself the same, I was very low about myself. I uh, represented in Northern Ireland in the Homeless World Cup in Norway. The Homeless World Cup is brilliant, you know, the experience of it is one of the best. One of the best things you're ever going to do in life, you know, well, me personally, anyway. The highlights for me was the likes of meeting, meeting all the staff, going away in those dances and stuff. You know, and uh, part of the team for Norway. The kids are really awesome, just trying to look at it off now, got me own, own place, you know, and just working ahead in there. Well, for me, it's not just about just coming to play football, you know, we obviously we socialise during the week as well, for people that I didn't know. It's like a home from home, it's like a family, whereas other people, they have nobody. To rely on, whereas I have street soccer to rely on. Okay, uh, I'm going to wrap up now, but just want to say, just remember, follow your passion. Volunteering is really important at the age you're at, you know, and I'm sure most of you are probably already involved in volunteering in your local clubs or community groups or whatever it is that your passion is. Um, you're going to face, in the years and months ahead, you're going to face lots of ups and downs. 
don't ever let it you know diminish your enthusiasm for what your passion is and just keep on and okay and eventually you'll get to a good place all right good luck Obviously, you talked about generosity and purpose and, and volunteering, and all the research shows that actually the individuals who volunteer get a huge amount from it themselves. What exactly do you get from it? Um, like my, my passion is just, like serving the community. So if we're if you're personally if I'm involved in something and I think it's making a difference to others and helping others, I get a lot of you know that's more important to me than uh, getting praise from a boss or something like that. You know, that's that's really the, the most important thing for me. And, in our team, uh, in my team, in the charity, there's 55 staff, and we had a conference recently, and I said, stand up, if you started off as a, a volunteer, you know, keep standing, if you didn't, sit down. All 55 were standing, you know, so the volunteering bit um, is really important from a, you know, career development sort of pathway, but it's also really important just for your own well-being and your own, you know, knowing that you're making a difference, and everybody in this room can make a difference, that's the thing. Folks, please join me in thanking Michael. Thank you.